Sometimes, not often. The audacity. I, just, I do get a hint of the Midwestern when Griff talks, and it just brings a smile to my face. <laughs> like, it's really not often. Like, I have, there's one woman in my program named Heather Wirtz, and she says, oh, gosh, oh, all yeah. the time. So I get my fill. I don't need Griffin. I don't need you. <laughs> Griffin, can you just, just, can you just say, oh, yeah, again? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> There's, have you seen the, the, I don't know if you see the Midwestern joke, but like the, is it, it's O-P-E, people spell it, and I, that's like a common Official thing. Official pussy eaters? Yes. <laughs> that's what yep. O-P-E stands for. No, it doesn't, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, I've never heard that before in my no, life. You, you, just, you just had that at the fucking hip. Oh, do you sometimes, have your membership card Jeff with you too? Stuff that just, sometimes Jeff says stuff that shows me that he's deeper into the internet than any uh, yeah. 4chan meme lord will ever be. <laughs> Maybe Jeff is 4chan. I did watch the QAnon documentary about 8chan. Dude, you guys need to watch that. It's wild. Is it a, wait, a documentary by QAnon? No, 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 no. It's a documentary by um, the guy who made Monster Camp, which is about LARPing. Um, but it's about QAnon. He 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 gets in deep with the creators of HM. Ugh. Patient HM. You got it, Jamie. It's wild. It's it's worth watching because these people are just so weird. Hmm. Sometimes I think I'm out of the internet loop, but then I talk to a Gen Zer, and they really don't know what the fuck. Either they don't know what is going on, or they're in a whole other internet that we're not even aware of. Mm. I I, it's like when I got a, a group text by my stepdad, and that was fucking weird. <laughs> I was gonna say, I feel like if you're not on TikTok, that's that's where Gen Z lives right now. It's true. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're all. I just TikTok. stay on Instagram, and then the TikTok feeds over there uh, occasionally. Yeah, that's where I see it. The best of it makes its way over. I'm, I'm on TikTok, I but I just can't. I can't find good talks, man. TikTok. Don't you have Are to like find talks? like a dirty talk hole that really <laughs> sucks you in where it's yeah. like, oh. My it's... problem is I have this weird engagement strategy for social media where I just won't like anything unless it's from someone I know. So I don't ever like a video. <laughs> well, I feel like that's that's kind of, oh, even for YouTube? No, I don't like videos at all. I, I noticed that oh, with wow. your Twitter, Jeff, because it's like, oh, yeah. usually I get fed things by people that I follow by their likings but it's only like you at retweeting somebody when you think something's funny and i'm like that's so bizarre <laughs> it's only it's like you're cutting out the article from the magazine and sending it to me <laughs> 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 but the internet version of that to be clear it wasn't started by me it was started by my friend and it's become the only way in which i engage on twitter and i'm sure it's highly irritating to follow me for that very reason Oh well, no, you do, you don't tweet very, you don't do it very much. So it's no big deal. Yeah. But I, I don't get like to see what you're trained, liking. We, I was trained by early internet forums to just, to just like stalk and never say anything. Yeah. So I feel like that's what I do on Twitter. Long time well. lurker, first time poster. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. It, that's what I. That's what I. That, but I, 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 I yearn to not be that. And uh, the the. Uh, uh, Oh God! What's the website? The old website that Facebook. Uh, no. <laughs> MySpace. The old website that Tim Rogers used to be part of. Action button. Kotaku. No. Neopets. Oh. Oh. Neogaf. Not action button. No, not action. That was his, but there was one before that, that he with worked Brandon at? Sheffield. Oh Lord. Um, um. And it has a forum, and apparently it's back, and it's like old forum. And like they're on it again, and I I want to go there, and I want to like post like some thirty thousand word thing about like one song. And then and Tim will be like, "Delete out. competition is not my forte." <laughs> 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 I am the one who must write thirty thousand word. Reviews. Exactly. <laughs> Can't chop his steez, man. <laughs> Come at you. Well, I'm not going to write good words. It's just going to be words. It's going to be stream of consciousness. That's going to be my thing. Love it's it. going to be very, uh, very anti-feminist at the mm, end. Mm. <laughs> you got to own the femmes. Yeah. <laughs> Put them back where they belong. And then the other thing is that I, uh, what I do is I'll engage in a forum or I'll engage in an internet subculture only insofar that I can spend a large amount of money 
to engage in that mm, culture, a la but then I won't else. actually, um, I won't actually like contribute. So like for the Game Boys, I've built like, I don't know, six Game Boys now, and I've learned things, but I'm not gonna tell anyone these things. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep it to myself. Like I've learned things that are probably actually useful to people. You have to say I've seen things that'll shock your eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> but i don't want to share it it's just all i want is to spend money that's mm. all I need. you should join like a like a niche discord i've done that even those it's very i'm on i'm on the yeah, rg 351p discord <laughs> nice are you coding up a storm no like absolutely fixing, not <laughs> fixing issues no um should we do this by the way Sure. We've been doing it. I mean, yeah, but we didn't introduce ourselves. I'm in the middle of it. I, you are in the middle We're of it. We're halfway done. All right. I mean, I think you started talking about Game Boy, so that's a good way to to get <laughs> get us in the right headspace here. This is James yeah. Game Boy Share. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Game Boy Corner, where I put... It, it's still just going to be an amalgamation of things that I'm emulating, so I put Game Boys in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but the batteries are on. <clears throat> That's a great idea. Is this yeah. is this just called Jamie's money hole? Yeah. And we talk about this week. It's. <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird. Game Boy emulation. He's no, been that's, that's... he's been fighting for that domain for some time now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jamie's money hole is when I when I live tweet my uh, my analysis sessions. That's. <laughs> oh my moments. god. I okay. Just was, oh, we'll talk about. Let's it start the let's start Jamie's money hole off right here. Hey everybody, it's Boss and Barrel Radio. I am Griff Hoffman. With me is Jeff Brewer. What's up? James Scherer. Welcome to the Money Hole. This is your monthly or bi-monthly Money Hole chat where we talk about money, baby. Do you have too much of it? Well, let me tell you what you can do with it. Sink it into bullshit. Guys, which stock are we about to take to the moon? Oh, baby. You, you, know, um, you remember January of 2021, three months ago? Uh -huh. We are we're current. <laughs> Does um, let's see. We got it has to be something that we're nostalgic that people our age are nostalgic Staples. for. Staples. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No, no, no. Oh, Office is Max. is Toys R Us coming back? I thought they were coming back. Maybe we jump on that. What we do Give is we draw boost. we draw fan arts of Jeffrey the giraffe hopping into mm -hmm. a rocket. Yeah, and his yep. little yeah. his little giraffe heads poking out of it. Yeah, and, he and he's got the stonks. FAO shorts tree in there, too. Yeah, yeah, he sang stonks. Do you get it? He sang stonks. Yep, we put him in Fortnite. Put it in Fortnite. <laughs> oh, yeah, Stonk Man is in Fortnite. <laughs> Video games are great. Video games are great. So are stonks. Video games are Hey, great. guys, let's talk about video games. Yeah. This is how we start this show. Um, it's a show every month or so where we just, uh, I don't know, what's the premise of this thing? I read a book about podcasting. We're supposed to have a premise. Uh, okay. We're just talking about uh, games. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I think. Which okay. ones we okay. like. Every yeah. once in a while, we're like, wow, it's been a while since we did one of these. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Regularity. Get together and talk about games. Yeah, uh, all the tenets of that book, right? Uh, you know, like, no, your audience needs to know what to expect and when to expect it. Predict Very good predictability, consistency, yep. Yep. regularity, Every all of these things. Every Right. <laughs> Love it. Hey, you know, A Life Well Wasted was, was one of the most beloved podcasts, video game yeah. podcasts out there, and that is the most irregular podcast ever created. I was going to say, irregular reward schedule is where it's at for our, uh, behavioral conditioning. So. Exactly. Yeah. The most reinforced. Yeah. So actually, exactly. we're applying psychology to this. Yeah, that's going to be our spin, is that we're, we're the noom of video game podcasts. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of us is gonna is gonna uh, be the coach, the video game coach that someone pays? You're doing great. <laughs> I can probably you handle don't that. Need as much ice cream. I but probably you're doing that's great. pretty much all I can bring to the table. <laughs> um, yeah. Speaking the of doing about, great, the, go on. Go no, on, you on. please. Uh, yeah. I, I was just gonna say the best part about the Noom commercials is there's always one guy. So there's all the announcer, the the narrator of the Noom commercials always says. We use positive psychology and a cognitive behavioral approach to help you with dieting. And then immediately after that, it cuts to, like, usually a dude with a beard. And he's like, I don't know. All I know is that I don't, I don't eat the brownies no more. 
<laughs> no, I feel like the Nomads, they're, they're like the classic, like, you ever want to just eat an entire pizza pie? Well, mm -hmm. you can't. But... <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wait, but that's not how you lose weight. They're like, no, at noon, you can if you want. Just eat the pie. Yeah. <laughs> I like this. You're not going to lose the weight, but you can. Yeah, eat. just eat the whole pizza. We don't care. <laughs> it just means more money for us, you idiot. I mean, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> don't eat it then. I don't care. I dare you. <laughs> Are you really rich and you want to lose weight and pay money to do it? Well, I got a service for you. <laughs> do you have a Do you have a, a tight money hole that is ready to be <laughs> plunged by Noom? Are you a tech bro who thinks that you could just pay your way out of any problem? <laughs> We've got an app for that. Are you scared of big goals? What about small goals? <laughs> tiny goals. Tiny goals and tiny money holes. Oh my god. <laughs> also, I think I said this. This is not related to video games, but it's tech adjacent, so I'm going to say it anyway. Um, mm. You guys need to watch the WeWork documentary because every single oh, you did tell us. every single human being in that documentary, <laughs> they are like a parody of like San Francisco uh -oh. tech, uh, like privilege, just completely out of touch, wanting to change the world. And every single one of them just made me laugh so hard. <laughs> Those are all Noom customers right there. That's what I'm trying to say. Sounds good to me, dude. It's very yeah, good. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. The CEO is this like breathless tall thin wealthy israeli guy and he's just so ridiculous aren't they all but aren't they all <laughs> uh-oh <laughs> welcome to 4 chan <laughs> that's our premise our premise is tv recommendations also watch the 8chan documentary <laughs> three white dudes in their 30s america, insert topic here america wants to hear the what podcast we have to say. exactly yeah exactly we're a prize demo <laughs> oh man but yeah, I... have you guys been nope. playing have you guys been playing and enjoying the video games i haven't oh <laughs> i have been playing and enjoying the video games i feel like you, you know we I've, joked I've... it's been about since it has been a bit since we talked and uh and recorded something so i think it's you know close to two months here at this point and honestly i haven't played a whole lot so if you guys got something you want to really dig into take it away hmm. well the last time we spoke i had not Beaten, I just I'm just realizing this, and I, I I don't think that I had beaten completely the Bravely Default too, mm. and we haven't discussed verbally since then. I don't believe. I don't think so. I don't even recall. Yeah, pulling this record it. of what we yeah. talked about. Yeah, did we discuss so, it last time? I think I might have just briefly nope. spoke about it, but I definitely wasn't. You know. I think it was like I think I'm gonna buy this. Yeah. Well. <laughs> well. Eighty hours plus later. <laughs> I'm done, and um, I love that freaking game. Did Jeff? Did you? Did you touch it? Did you touch it I touched bit? it. I uh, I touched it. I played it. Um, and somewhere along the way, I got distracted by old games, mm. which are verboten, so we won't discuss them. Um, but wait, I, I want to talk what? about. I want to talk about the. the That's the all there is right now. Later. There's no <laughs> such thing as new games There's, anymore. That is true, Griffin. Actually. Um, yeah, so I played like I'd say like two or three hours of it. Jamie, I got to the second town, and I was I was actually liking it a fair bit, but I just kind of stopped. Mm. But tell me, tell me your thoughts. I want to hear how you. Why you know. did you just kind of stop? Um, I think I just kind of stopped because I got distracted by other older titles that were sitting on my Switch. Um, but I thought it was cool, and I I fought the guy who was like German or whatever. Or some some the guy who talks like this. yeah some flavor of Austrian or something yes um, and then I I will destroy you I read online that if you somehow managed <laughs> a wacky tube man if you somehow managed <laughs> <laughs> I read that if you somehow managed to beat him then um, the game gives you like a bad ending and I was like that's cool um, yes yeah I I didn't realize this so you so you came into it well you you've I have played. I played one on the 3DS, uh -huh. and it, but you have played and beaten both. False. The 3DS ones? I have beaten none of them, but I'm extremely online. <laughs> <laughs> extremely. Online. That's what someone said about me at a workplace. Um, <laughs> Radically and then online. They were like, "You're fired. <laughs> You're extremely online." <laughs> oh man. Um, so that's. Yeah, but but did you you did you get really deep into one or both of those initial ones? Uh, not really. Um, I just happened to know that. 
bravely, and you can probably speak to this more than me, Jamie, because you actually beat one of them. Uh, it has a reputation for presenting a world and then kind of pulling the rug out from under you later in the game. But, like, the mechanic that they like to do is, like, forcing you to replay large segments of the game. So I don't think that this one does that. It might... People might think that, but I don't think that this... So one thing that you had told me, Jeff, is that in the previous games, there's, like, a big reveal, and then, like, something that you took for granted about the world is changed, and then and then you play through big parts of the world again. I don't think that... I, I do think that the story of this game is generally cool and has some twists and turns, but there wasn't, like, a big reveal that really shocked me. And then there... And then in terms of replaying previous parts of the game, you do need to revisit the major cities, but you don't, comparatively speaking, I mean, it's an 80-hour long game, comparatively speaking, you don't spend a whole lot of time in each one. So it doesn't really feel like you're backtracking. But what this game does, which is really cool, that I've never experienced before, and I didn't know about, and I didn't know that JRPGs do this, and then it was emulated in Undertale. So it's almost like Bravely Default prepared me for Undertale, <laughs> was that you beat it, and you you get a shitty ending. Like, when you beat it the first time, 60 hours in, you get an ending, and it is bad. Yeah. And the game doesn't tell you, hey, there's other endings. The game is just like, oh, here's credits, it's done. Like, literally, that's it. There's no indication that you should reload your save or anything. So I beat the game, I got a shitty ending, and then I went on the interwebs where Jeff lives. <laughs> where Jeff hails from. I'm not even a real man. And then I said, how do I get the good ending? And they're like, oh, just uh, log back into your save. And I'm like, but no, no, it didn't, it didn't, you know, I I would think at the end of the credits, maybe there'd be like a little like Marvel-esque, hey, maybe you should open your save again. But no, there was nothing. But then I opened my save again and it's, and it was different. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I played for another 10 hours and then I got another ending. And that one kind of sucked too. And I was like, oh. Sounds and good then I so talked- far. <laughs> and, then I, and then I got, well, I got credits again. <laughs> Damn, and then, man. And then, and then it's like, and then I go on the internet and I'm like, well, I got, I got another bad ending. What did, where did I go wrong? And it's like, no, 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 no. Open your save. And I'm like, all right. And then I open the save. And then I don't know what to do. And it's like, okay, go speak to this person and then try to save. And you can't. And then it's going to make a fake save file. And then you open that one. Ooh. And I'm like, what? Oh. The, what? what is why and then i opened that one and then i got a cool ending so you so after you only really beat the game after viewing the credits in triplicate um and also the game opens with a question which is that your main character washes ashore and he doesn't know why he what happened previously he doesn't know why he was washed ashore he, he can't really remember where he's coming from but something about the world is different and you can beat the game twice without the game ever even approaching that issue. <laughs> and so, like, the cent- to me, the central, like, plot of the game isn't even, like, addressed until you beat the game three times. Mm. Um, but that said, I wanted to beat the game three times. It, yes, it was frustrating the way it went about it, but I thought the combat was incredible. This game makes you do the things that I avoid doing in other JRPGs because they seem too daunting, like seeking out the thing that will allow you to get through the 999 damage barrier or seeking the thing that will allow you to have more than 999 health. Or Um, beating the game. (laughs) Or beating the game. I feel like um, <laughs> Bravely, like the the intended audience for Bravely is like people who just kind of know to do that. People who are like, mm-hmm. well, I'm of course I'm going to do everything. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm treating. So I, the first thing, Jamie, I, I was I was like, I, I didn't care for Bravely Default. The first game, the battle system just didn't speak to me at all. So I kind of was turned off from it. But I'm interested to get your take on on what spoke to you on on Bravely Default Two's uh, battle <laughs> system, but quick caveat before that i googled it just to be like huh, okay let's do some reading on this while you're talking through it and the first review is like this is the best game in the series i'm like Wait, there's more than two fucking games for this yeah, yeah and i guess yeah. there is and layer yeah yeah so i'm, I'm reading through <laughs> some of the synopsis and it, it seems like that's a trend in in most of these games is is you know breaking that fourth wall and and messing with the kind of save functions or yeah. you know that yeah. the the structure of the game so. I know the first game literally had you repeating a chapter like multiple times to the point that I think people no. complained about it. 
Um, and I think they, no. I think they changed it for the. I think they made it like they had the same idea, but executed with more grace mm, in the sequel. Gotcha. <laughs> I could see that. You never, you never repeat things. You're never <laughs> watching the same dialogue go by. Mm -hmm. When you load back into your save file, after you beat the game the first two times, the characters have a vision of the game possibly ending this way, the plot possibly ending this way, and then they're like, "Well, I don't like that." And then you have to literally. So they doomed to vision. live on a shelf for the next 40 years as they slowly <laughs> decay into the digital nothingness. <laughs> oh no, in 15 years, my, the digital marketplace that sells me will be gone. <laughs> oh no, I'll be harvested for Pokemon Emerald. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, no, and then you literally have to... Uh, you have to. Th then the characters will be like, well, it seems like we've gotten a vision of how things could end. We could just keep going. And, and things would probably end that way. What do you want to do? And then you have to say, like, no. And leave the dungeon. And then when you leave, something else will change. And then, you, and then there's, like, a you know a plot hint that maybe you should go here. But you're never repeating mm. uh, things. But what I liked about the battle system is uh, it's challenging with... Um, sometimes JRPGs are challenging in the way, like, for example, I played a, a <coughs> decent chunk of Yakuza Like a Dragon, and there are just difficulty spikes. And the only way that you're going to get over those difficulty spikes, because the battle system is pretty straightforward, is grinding. Yeah. In this Yakuza game, like, a, like a Dragon is, is an odd example, though, just because of how that was put together. But I totally know what, you've, what you're saying, where there's those Persona checkpoints. Persona would be another yeah. example. For, for me, Persona, Persona 5 was... Um, you know, there were huge difficulty spikes there, and yeah. the only way yeah. that I, you know, I'm not a very good video game player, but the only way that I am going to surmount those is by <clears throat> is by grinding. In this game, you grind steadily throughout, but then you'll hit a boss fight, and <clears throat> you will, on, on normal difficulty, you will just be destroyed. You, in, within a turn, all of your people will die. Even the first turn, like before you can even act. And the, the game, the game, it does something really well which is it it throws these huge things in your way but it's it's also giving you both in story and in through the gameplay it's hinting that this might happen and you have the tools to address this and you don't need to grind you're, you're gonna have to change classes you're gonna have to change jobs and there's a bajillion jobs mm. and the and this is the way the game's way of convincing you to, so is it, uh, it's like every boss has a gimmick, and I don't mean gimmick in a bad way, but like an exploitable exactly feature exactly. that you can you can take advantage of to win the fight instead of beating your head against it by playing how you've been playing up to this point. Exactly, because I think that it's human nature when you you find a cool job that you like, you just want to leave that character in that job and you just sure. want to use it. Yeah, and yeah. then even when you get a cool looking job. You know, you won't really understand what it's doing. Every time, I would say after mid-game, every time this game introduces a new job, <laughs> when in the, in, the, in the skills that it chooses to highlight for the job, it, it literally makes no sense why you would use that job. It'll be like, when this character dies, all your characters die. <laughs> and it's like, what? What do you, why? <laughs> when this character dies, you lose all your money. And I'm like, but, okay, but I don't, I'm not going to use that one. And then you'll, and then you'll look more into it. And it's like, and, and there will be some way in which and then that you fight actually. Money bags, McBoss money attack. <laughs> yeah. There, there'll be some way in which that actually helps. And it's, um, it's cool that the game kind of pushes you into these jobs that way um, and eventually uh, gives you a job class called the Brave Bearer, which, which just screws with the Brave system itself in a, in a way which is really fascinating. So it feels like every class up until the very end of the game is really unique ways of, of manipulating the Brave slash default system, which is where you can either go four times in one move and then be at a deficit that you need to re remake, or you can save up moves, go four times, and then still have your next turn come around when it would have normally. And so a lot of the classes manipulate those things. And at the very end, you get this one class, which is like, what if you could steal <coughs> brave points or default points from the enemy, but also, but also or give them to you? Or what if you could decrease everyone's you know brave points to zero or increase everyone's to four? And... Um, it just it was it was just so fascinating. It kept it so fresh, because every time I got a new job and it would give you those little highlights, it would sound so useless. But then you'd put it into practice, 
and it would be so cool. And, and I think that's what strung me along and really kept it. Fr it didn't feel like I was playing the same battle system for 80 hours. It felt mm. like it was like 20 different little puzzles that I was mm -hmm. playing for 80 hours. So cool. I think that's why I stuck with it. I mean, that's that's the kind of thrill of a job system. Well done, I think. Um, I was going to say that something that oddly kind of made me like a little bit meh was I distinctly remember when they were describing the white mage, they were like, you can cast protect, which gives you like a 10% damage debuff. And I was like, that's pointless. <laughs> so what the game will do is then you'll get the red mage. The red mage will allow you to do chain spell. So if you combine the red mage and the white mage, then you can do protect four times times two. Mm. So then you can get 80%, mm. you know, like, so, yeah. and then, and then you'll get, and then you'll get Hestega with a different class. And then you can class Hestega on the person who's doing that. And then they can also, I love that, that you call 80%. it Hestega. Hestega? Hestega. Hestega, Reina. So all of the classes build upon each other. And the, another cool thing is that um, they don't force any one character t into one type of class. So, for example, the... The, ga the character that the game clearly is showing you, like, this is going to be your white mage. She's a lady. She's, like, you know, she's a princess, so she's going to be your white mage. If you don't want her to be a white mage, there's no stat penalty if you make the main character the white mage. I like that. And the other thing is, you don't need to combine <clears throat> classes that necessarily you would think go together. So, for example, there's one class called the Salve Maker, which makes potions and stuff, and you would think that you would naturally combine that with, like, a white mage. So that you could have a really powerful healer that can use items and spells. But at the end of the game, you get all these cool combat classes that do crazy damage if you have inflicted a status ailment that term, like a specific one. So if you combine this salve maker class with one of those, then you can they can toss out an item that'll that'll cause a uh, status effect on a boss that you wouldn't normally be able to cause that status effect on. And then you can milk that in an interesting way. So the, a lot of the classes that you wouldn't think combine well can, and and usually there's some cool things that come out of that. I would de I would definitely recommend Jeff if you if you put this game on hard, and you and you go for it. Like I think that this is going to be <coughs> like your favorite JRPG. Yeah. Because it the 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 it's definitely the the job class is as you said is definitely more than the sum of its parts. Uh -huh. And on hard, I would imagine that you really have to find those uh synergies so to say and then it'll be it'll be a lot of fun i found when i played so i played a little bit of bravely default one on hard mode and i hit a boss that i just could not overcome um fairly early on uh but i could try it on two and see how i feel um yeah i don't know i i should get farther i feel like the thing that that maybe stopped me was just feeling like I hadn't yet reached the point where there was a lot of meaning to the different job classes in terms of how different they felt. And I was like impatient to get there. And then I just kind of got distracted um, and decided to replay Final Fantasy XII instead. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we all, we've all been there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I really like it. I think that you should keep going. And Griffith, the mood ever strikes. I think that, uh, I think it's a pretty great game. Yeah, and the writing's pretty good too, right? Like I, I, you know, I know the story is nothing to like, you know, absolutely lose your mind over, but I felt like the characters were charming. Characters were charming. <clears throat> Listen, I, I'm, I'm not saying things because I don't want to spoil stuff, but I think some of the stuff they do is really cool. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, <laughs> it is your, your typical, save the wor world, kill God kind of thing. But like, uh, um, it's uh, there. There are there are subplots along the way which are truly fascinating. <laughs> there's one. There's one. Um, there's one city you visit where um, the church in the city has become like corrupted, and they're basically conducting an inquisition. And so, like wild accusations are being thrown around, and um, they're accusing everyone of being fairies. And the way that you prove you're not a fairy is by jumping off of a cliff. <laughs> and if you Ooh. Whoa. And if you die, you 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 clearly weren't a fairy. That's toxic masculinity. Hmm. <laughs> so it's uh there's cool things like that along the way, and also there the the fourth wall breaking stuff they do at the end. I I thought was which was genuinely cool too. 
That's super cool. I uh, right on. Yeah, glad to hear you had a good time with it. For especially an eighty-hour game. I mean, I only feel like I can do a couple of those every year. So <laughs> I'm going to save myself for I don't know anything else. It, it's definitely <laughs> yeah. No, I feel it's you. definitely something I still care about, Jamie. And uh, thank you for for singing its praises because that'll help me muster the energy to to pour myself back into it. Because I was I'll say th- yeah, I was working hard. Go ahead. I'll say this, I, and I'll, maybe you guys should save it for a time. <clears throat> so not to not to be a bummer. This is a happy ending. But my dog, my dog ha- had been very sick. He's better now. He required all sorts of surgery and studies and everything. And so basically, I've been working my ass off, and in my in my free time, a lot of it over the past two months, I've just been driving this dog back and forth to this like specialized vet an hour away, waiting in the car forever. And then coming mm. back and then sitting with the dog. So this game was perfect for that. Like mm. it was absolutely, I could have it in my lap while I was hanging out with him. Uh, thankfully he's all better now, but you know, like uh, if you, if you have some menial, tedious, sad task that you need to take <laughs> care of uh, this, this game it will be right there with Is you your life for... a slow motion tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, have I got a title <laughs> for you? Default <laughs> But dog is all better. Everything's happy, and the game the game helps me get through that time. So it, it's uh, it's uh, good for that. Kind it's of your thing. binding of Isaac. It's my binding, which of I Isaac, played yes. for four hundred hours after my cat um, I thought died. <laughs> well, speaking I, of dogs and cats who didn't die, you guys want to tell me about Monster Hunter Rise and how you've been having a great time with that? <laughs> you mean the like the hour and a half I've played of it? Have yeah, you not I'm, been I'm singing a bunch of time? Okay, I just assumed you guys were going going ham. Uh, not yet. All in. Yeah, I want to. I'm, I'm, I want to so yeah. bad. It does not. It does not help you no. with that. It's really? it, it does not want you. It it seemingly wants you to not play. Jamie, we need to do a hunt together because I think I did a hunt. I did the first like hunt, the menial hunt, where it's like just carve some guys, and I had fun. It, but it is it does that thing that Monster Hunter does where it's like, hey, you want to play the game? And you're like, yeah, totally. I want to play the game. They're like, well, hold on. Let me just uh, let me just give you like 800 tutorials. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so it's still Monster Hunter. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much what it is. There's some nice quality of life improvements. I mentioned the dog, right? You can ride a dog. It's fun. It's great. I love the dog. Um, but it oh, does. You have it an sounds owl like it, too. it suffers. Oh, okay. So, 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 do you want to just want to point out some of the differences between World, which I did enjoy quite, quite a bit, and what's going on here in Rise? It, this this seems so much more complicated off the bat because in world it's like here's your cat but it, and and your cat can help and in this it's like here's your dog your cat and your owl and they can do thirty thousand things and here's what they can do and here's what they can't do and you can get new ones at this guy and it's like why would I get a new one I, I have no idea why you're telling me this um, and uh, yeah the, the, my all, other problem is that it's uh, shockingly it's a shockingly beautiful game even in portable mode and I was just kind of walking around staring at character models and the world just being like, I didn't know the switch could do this. <laughs> and so that kind of distracted me for a bit, uh, but I'm ready to jump in now. But Jeff, what do you, I, I feel what, the same way. <clears throat> Pardon me. I got some stuff going on my throat right now, but I feel the same way that you do, Jamie. Like, I think that I don't know what it was about world. I don't know if, if it was just a, a moment in, in time, but I've had this experience with Monster Hunter games in the past where, like, I pick them up and I'm like, oh, I'm excited. I want to do this. And then, I, like, it starts to tutorialize and it starts to dump information on me. And I'm like, I am i can't handle this. Like, this is too much for my feeble human brain to comprehend. Like, I need a third yep. hand and I need an extra brain and <laughs> another human. Where's my eight currencies that I, it, two, four of which I can pay for? Hey, that's, this doesn't make any that's, sense. That's, that's, I played that game already. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think, I don't know what it was about world that helped me overcome that hump. Because I think that once you overcome that hump, the game is just like, it's a game. Like it's, it's a game. It's fun. It's an action game. You know, it has various systems in it, but they're not that overwhelming. Something about the way this game puts its foot forward it just feels like a a a step back into the like kind of obfuscation that i've encountered when i've played other monster hunter games and i think the 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 panacea for that is for you and i jamie to just do a hunt and like not worry about it i i'm totally with you because i i even just testing out your weapons like what you know the game quite literally has over a hundred tutorials for you to read and I made the mistake of thinking, okay, I should read these because I want to. I don't want to miss something. <clears throat> but then at the end of the day, when I, when I went to try the weapon, all you're doing is mashing a button. Yeah, that's it. Also, it, and 
I don't know why they front load it. Like why that. do they put like four combos on the screen for your weapon, and they're not even like the four combos you want to use? They're just like four <laughs> random combos. Like why do they do yeah. that? And all four of them are somehow press X four times. <laughs> why aren't they right. just like here's what this weapon's all about? Instead, they're like, well, here's your demon slash, and here's your double demon slash, and here's your demon slash in hell mode. And I'm like, what does this mean? Just tell me yeah. what the weapon does. So it's funny that you guys are bringing these 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 foibles up as as your experience for not really digging in because I played the demo of it, and and I was immediately struck with the same things that you're saying. Where it's like, wow, this seems like a lot of shit that's different, and uh, I don't really want to take the time to read about these things nor care. So I just want to go find and beat the shit out of this monster. And then you know you're stumbling across things. I'm like, I heard you could ride the dog, but I'm not going to read it. <laughs> and I'm not getting a button prompt to ride the dog, so whatever. And then I found a wire bug, and then I accidentally like rode a monster and, f- f- you know, puppet mastered a monster into another mos- monster, and that was cool and all. But yeah, there's just something about it that's not grabbing me like World Dead. Yeah, I don't know what. I don't. I don't think it's necessarily that the that the core is that much different because I think <clears throat> buried underneath all the confusing systems is the same game, right? Like I think it's yeah. I think it's it's it draws a lot from World. Um, I think it's got the same vibe. Uh, you know, certainly there's the wire bug, which isn't that complicated. There's like one button that's kind of generally related to the wire bug, um, but it's just something about the way they try to introduce you to the world is so off-putting, and it's so frustrating because I really do want to be in that world. It's really pretty, and I know the monster hunting is super fun, but it's just like. I don't know what it is, you know, I, I, I'd have to replay world to see like, what, what do they do that helps you like actually seem, onboard to that game? I seem to recall that with world, I, I don't think that they, there was actually a slower rollout of the information that you need to play the game, but it, the hub world in world was larger. Mm-hmm. And I felt like you kind of naturally didn't even come across some of the NPCs and the vendors until you needed them because they were on higher tiers of this kind of spread out hub world and you didn't even know they were there until you kind of needed them. Whereas in this game, I think in an effort to make things quicker, they condense the hub world. The hub world is incredibly dense and every <laughs> so vendor messy. you could possibly need is, is two feet away from you and they all want to say hi to you. And I'm like, I have no idea why I need, why yeah. I would need this third third different blacksmith so after you do the first mission honestly and i hate to say this but i feel like it's it is kind of in the spirit of monster hunter you can just pause the game and they're like hey which thing do you want to do and i'm like oh thank god Mm. (laughs) like they're like do you want to go to the forge or do you want to go to the cook or do you want to do this and i'm like oh like i'd never have to walk around this place again (laughs) yeah I don't know why it's so it's so intimidating to be in that zone but it really is I think, you know, I said I played the demo and it didn't really stick with me. Um, But I think part of that is, is, you know, kind of two things. One, uh, I think I've said this before too, which is, you know, Genshin Impact is is still kind of that game where it's the grind, the repetition, the, you know, you going in there and you're going to fight the same monster and you're going to fight the same thing and learn its its tactics. I mean, obviously Monster Hunter has has quite a bit more depth with, with its complexities of more akin to a fighting game um, as you're you're cycling between different enemies and different weapon loadouts and stuff like that. But I, for me, it's just like, eh, it's too soon. I'm not ready mm-hmm. to, to play another one of these. And, and World was such a high watermark that I'm like, well, it's going to be a big investment to get back to that feeling yeah. again. So I kind of don't want to do it. I, I think Rise is, is poised to, you know, carry the mantle. But I think it's also like... It's just asking a lot, and and I need to get a group together, and I think that maybe that's you and me, Jamie, just to kind of like force ourselves to just do a couple hunts and then start feeling Definitely. the vibe, <clears throat> because it doesn't. Yeah. Because yeah, you guys playing the same weapons you were playing before, Jeff. Um, I think bug thing. I think Jamie, I'm gonna do insect glaive again. Heavy yeah. gun thing. Okay. What are you doing, Jamie? I was gonna. I just wanted to do sword and shield. Actually, I I did go to the the training area and just try to couple out and i just kind of was digging the standard bog standard sword and shield so i might just try that i heard the hunting horn is super op now hmm. and like also apparently quite simplified oh nice yeah. that's like good to you hear. don't have to do crazy inputs for songs anymore you just press buttons that's cool <laughs> yeah. i will maybe i'll maybe i'll check that yeah. out yeah 
Maybe I'll check. No. But yeah, I, I really hope I can get into it more, but I keep getting pulled in other directions. Um, yeah, me I too. mentioned FF12, which I don't think we need to talk about other than, uh, hey, that game has a good story. I know that it's been maligned in a lot of ways, but well, actually two things I want to mm-hmm. say about it. Uh, number one, the story is super good. Number two, um, the speed up mode available in all the Final Fantasy remasters and remakes and stuff um, is an absolute godsend. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Like, especially playing it like four times on giant land masses that aren't that interesting in FF12, it's super nice to just be able to run through them and not have to think. Um, cool. But yeah. Uh, another game that's pulled me away a lot, though, um, is uh, Demon's Souls for PS5. Um, and Ooh, nice. Part of the reason that I started kind of going back to it after playing it initially for a little while and doing the thing I always do in Demon's Souls, which is like start to go through the first level and get annoyed and then be like, all right, I'm done, um, <clears throat> was that I got a new TV and like basically redid my entire um, living room setup. And I was yeah, like, boy. I need a showpiece to like really enjoy this new setup. And um, one of the only PlayStation 5 games that I have purchased thus far is Demon's Souls. And it is supposed to be one of the best looking. Um, so I was like, I'm going to play this. And uh, it's it's real good. I mean, you know, it's... It, have you guys played Demon Souls through before? No. Okay. Nope. I, I've played a little bit of this one. but no. Yeah. It's, um, it's definitely like proto Dark Souls, for better or worse. Um, and I think that it it has the like healing items like the healing items that you have to farm which is really annoying although they actually they seem less obnoxious than bloodborne um it has really irritating shit like encumbrance like you can only carry so much like not just encumbrance of how much you're wearing but like inventory encumbrance oh nice (laughs) well not not that nice (laughs) so it's not even just the fat roll versus the speedy roll you're talking like it's you it's yeah fallout have to dump your crap off at uh nuketown or whatever the hell's yep um well you can you don't have to go home you can just send shit to storage but it's just it's just i don't know why (laughs) oh nice just inventory management for the sake of inventory management the best thing is when you go to pick up an item in like a dicey situation where you might have to run away and they're like nah your inventory is full do you want to send this to storage press this button if you do and you're like i'm gonna die (laughs) um but god that game looks so good it is a beautiful game uh and an incredible incredible showpiece for the system and uh did you get past the first world jamie yeah i beat the uh i beat the the gobble the gooey guy the boy did you check out any of the other zones i got to a spider and the spider seemed impossibly difficult okay. and then i started playing spider-man <laughs> <laughs> the spider was in was in the um the mines right yes the spider's okay. the boss of the mines did you teleport to the mines and have the same experience i did of seeing like the 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 like late day sun and being absolutely blown away the first time i went to the mine i mean the first time you go anywhere in that game i was just staring at yeah. it for a long time it's 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 really a remarkable game and the fact that it's like 60 frames per second makes me really like bullish on the future of this console generation because it seems like there's like substantial power on tap there mm-hmm. it's definitely yeah. unapologetically though like a ps3 remake <laughs> like it is more oh, yeah. inscrutable than dark souls you definitely need a guide um to yeah. like not yeah. miss important shit i mean you know it's it's like you know, I, I think there was a Twitch Plays Dark Souls because it's one of those games where there is no real fail state, <laughs> right? Like, you never really lose. Like, so, so you could play, you could hit your head against a wall enough and eventually win. But to really enjoy all it has to offer, you kind of need a guide, um, which is a little bit of a bummer. But it's, it's a wonderful showpiece. And it's been, you know, I haven't played a game on my TV in a while. <laughs> and I think, Griffin, you commented on that. You were like, a console game? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and it's it's a nice way to kind of ease back into that world because it's just it's just gorgeous. And if you have a system that um, you can use to take advantage of that, then it's it's a real showpiece. You paid for those K's. I did pay for those K's. You're, you're gonna get those K's. I paid as little as I could for those K's, but I did pay for them. <laughs> um, what do you? I'm just curious. What do you think generally of? Um, I, I know you, at first you were having trouble like noticing the HDR, mm. I, and then I think you you spent some time with the settings. What do you think about just 
HDR and 4K in general? Is it is it a perceptible difference to you or not yet? I don't know. I mean, you know, part of what I learned about HDR and kind of diving down the rabbit hole is like in order to really enjoy HD. Well, first of all, like a lot of HDR that we see, Jamie, I'm sure you know all this. So this is all tat to you. Is it's fake, right? Like it's it's you know because reference HDR conditions are sub five nits of brightness. You know, they use a technique called tone mapping to fake it, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I honestly still don't entirely know if what I'm looking at is like real HDR, <laughs> just to be entirely honest with you. And my TV doesn't get insanely bright, so it's not like it's not like I, you know, can like immediately notice. I mean, what I will say is like that Vista that I described to you, right, where the late day sun, to me, that feels like a potential showpiece, right, for for a decently mm -hmm. executed HDR. It looks really vibrant. It looks really, um, it looks like it has a depth of color that I'm not used to. Um, and I do think that, you know, that game does have a lot of dark spaces, right? Which are, are lighted interestingly. Um, and I think that's probably related to HDR, but it's hard for me to know for sure <laughs> if that's what I'm seeing. <laughs> the, the sad thing about HDR is unless you're, unless you're going to learn how to calibrate and buy a thing to calibrate with or, pay a professional calibrator to come do that for you is that if you're not going to do that you can really only experience hdr if you buy two televisions and those two options that you have are the lg b9 or the lg c9 mm -hmm. or the lg b series and the c series. aren't they up to the x now if, cx and yeah now yeah, they're up BX. to 10 but the reason why is because <clears throat> unless you no other tv is popular enough and like purchased enough and and like enthusiast enough where there are plenty of YouTube resources to, that will tell you exactly which settings to change to what for specific sim, uh, systems. And if so, like, for example, I have two, I have two uh, nice TVs. I got a Sony and a LG. The only, the, uh, w the only one that I can really experience this on is the, is the LG because there are videos where people are like, okay, for the PS5, these are the spend 20 minutes making it this <laughs> and and then and then you do all that and you're, you're changing all sorts of settings that I, that I don't even understand and you, you putting into HGIG mode and doing this changing the, the color warmth to this and yeah. blah 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 and only then do you really kind of does it really kind of seem like it's jumping out mm. at you but uh, and it's a shame that we're there I think in the future it won't be that I think in the future hopefully things will get smart enough to like the point where the TV will be like, Oh, you plugged in a PS five. I guess I should do yeah. this. Uh, but right now it's not. That I think way. what I'm getting is something that is probably better than SDR. Like I think, I think that, that it is, you know, there's, there's the, the, like the gradient of differences in the colors seems a little bit more vibrant than I'm used to. Um, and just like I said, kind of more color depth, but I don't know. Like I honestly, I need to compare it to an SDR television and see, um, and I'm sure it's not like the real thing. And ultimately, I feel like my pursuit of a decent HDR picture is like a kind of a silly rabbit hole because I'm like in day to day use. Like, am I even going to notice this shit if it's so if it's such a like a white whale that like nobody even has it? Am I am I even getting it? <laughs> um, <laughs> and then also the, the great thing about HDR is like when I go to open the HBO app on on PS5, it's just a complete washed out mess. <laughs> like I watched the I watched the John Oliver show, which I'm sure isn't in HDR because he's on a freaking white background, and it's just a mess. Yeah, yeah. It's um. There's all sorts of things you have to think about. Like HDIG mode is the biggest one. Did you screw around with that? I don't know if the TV I have is HDIG compliant. See that? Then you're not get. So the 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 tricky thing with HDR is that the TV and the and whatever it's you know the console they need to be on the same page it's definitely it's they... definitely in hdr mode i just don't know if it's doing because isn't hdig like a specification or something hdig is letting the tv know that the console is going to set the parameters for the hd got it and if you and if you don't put the tv in hdig mode for the specific console what ends up happening is the console ends up chasing the tail of the TV and the TV ends up chasing the tail of the console. Mm -hmm. So you're, so, so things, you know, you might get one thing looking perfect, but then something's going to look blown out and then something's going to look way too dark. And it's just because 
each of the two things are trying to adapt to each other in an in a exponential way mm -hmm. and it and it doesn't it doesn't match up so but this is the type of thing that consumers shouldn't need to worry yeah, about right exactly. this is it's just kind of silly that this even exists and until all this gets ironed out it's you know it is it is ultimately it's very it's very frustrating but i i do i do think i see it even if even if i don't um you know set all these things and do everything right i think it's that thing where you live with it for a little bit and then you go back and you watch a you watch like a 1080p tv from like 2006 and you're like oh god yeah. you know it's that kind what of what i will say is yeah i mean i think i think what i'm you know when i look at it straight on and i'm surprised that vertical viewing angles have had an effect um that I didn't see coming, mm. but but uh, fortunately, where I've where I've set the TV is seemingly ideal for for that. But um, you know, when I'm when I'm looking at it straight on, I think it the quality of the image seems demonstrably better than my old television. Um, and there are other attached perks, right? Like I think that um, just just like some some bells and whistles that were not available to me before I upgraded were really nice. But yeah, I think I think I'm I think I'm noticing an improvement in 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 quality, but it's it is hard to tell to be honest. It having having upgraded, it feels like in some ways it's like a little bit of marketing hubris um because it is uh, TV manufacturers just lie. I think is the bottom line. <laughs> Like yeah, they yeah. lied about my TV being HDMI 2.1. It's not. It's it's like HDMI 2.0 plus. <laughs> yeah. So I can only do yeah. I can only, I can't do full RGB. I can only do YCBCR or whatever. It's like a whole. Mm. It's you should nobody should have to hear this shit. Like this is nobody should yeah. have to listen to these words coming out of my mouth. Is the bottom line. <laughs> but unfortunately, rush hour. Yes. Can you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? But unfortunately, <laughs> we do. If you want to try to engage with this stuff, and it's ridiculous. Like if I just plugged it in and I was like, "Oh, full RGB," I would have this horrible washed out image. Like, and I'd be like, "Oh, that's HDR. I guess everything looks really overly lighted." The the thing that kind of um, it, it's sad because OLEDs still aren't um, really affordable, but OLEDs kind of bypass a lot of this stuff because if if the pixels off the pixels off so it's not a question of like the, the you know the backlight is still going to be this much it's just yeah. off so i haven't for example transitioning into another game i played i haven't i've calibrated my ps5 for my oled i have not calibrated my xbox series x for my oled but i did play undertale um on my oled on my xbox series x because it's free on great game Pass. hdr Actually, actually looked amazing <laughs> because there's a lot of just black. No, I, I know, there's a lot I know, of just black I'm, on I'm the screen, about that. and <laughs> and there's a lot of black and purple. And when it's black, the OLED is off, and when it's purple, the OLED is like this. Looks like you know a, a <laughs> like a Vectrex like level phosphor purple. It's like like glowing purple. Like this purple is giving me some sort of cancer <laughs> that I don't understand yet. Um, but that was that looked amazing, um, and also sound sounded amazing. I I uh, I'm glad that I got back into that because in 2017 when it came out, you guys both played it, and uh, but I I bounced off of it. I just think I wasn't in the right place. I was like, why is this, the graphics are so simple? This is stupid. I never even got to meet like Sans or Papyrus, and um, little did you know it was full of I inky did. blacks. <laughs> <laughs> that that's what I needed the whole time. Back of the box Undertale quote needed. Inky Blacks. <laughs> yes, yes. Um but uh yeah, so I like like Bravely Default, I had to beat this game a couple times before I got the real ending. And uh little did I know that if uh, I really feel like the pacifist, the full pacifist ending is like the only true ending. And it also adds like a third to the game. And if you don't do the true pacifist thing, you don't get the full story of Dr. Alphys, which is the most important story in the game and adds an hour mm -hmm. to the playtime. And only after beating it completely on pacifist, seeing Dr. Alphys's full story actually figuring out what the hell is going on in this world did it land with me in an intense way and resonated with me in the way that i think it's resonated with so many but i am so glad that i heard you say back in 2017 that you can beat the game without hurting anyone until the first final boss battle when you have to fight mm -hmm. but 
even then you don't need to kill. But um, yeah, I, I didn't really, it didn't resonate with me. I mean, the music was beautiful. I thought it was humorous, but there, it was a little too meme for me. But then the, the final leg of the story, the final third with Dr. Alphys is like so genuine and so well done that I finally feel like I understand what all the hype was about. And I'm really glad that I, I, I got a chance to play it. It's also weird that I found that, I don't know if you had this experience, Jamie, but something about, like, it's 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 a weird thing that I've never really been able to articulate to people. But, like, you, when you play an RPG, I think a lot of people are like, well, like, what's the point of playing that game, right? Like, you're not really doing anything. You could just read it. I felt like, for whatever reason, experiencing that from an interactive perspective was really powerful. Yeah. Definitely. I don't know exactly why. I, I'm trying to think of why that might be. I think it's because you're actively choosing not to fight. You you have to phys- you have to literally, you know, mouse away from the fight button and you have to click on act or mercy and you have to if you're acting, you have to choose what action you take and you have to kind of tailor that action to the character of the enemy that you're fighting. And it's not always easy, so it does feel like an active process. Um, and then I feel like a lot of the game, a lot of the things that, uh, annoyed me about the game, I think end up being quite brilliant. Like I remember when I played it the first time, there are a lot of just hallways in this game with nothing, (laughs) like just a lot of nothing. And, uh, basically what that ends up kind of becoming, especially towards the end of the game where there's a lot of tension build up, is it all it almost kind of becomes that like tunnel walk, <clears throat> that wrestler tunnel walk. Oh yeah. And definitely. uh and it's uh so so all of the kind of passive elements of this game that you just kind of move through in a normal or not a normal in your run of the mill JRPG or whatever without thinking much, I feel like this game is very conscious of and makes use of. Um, and it's all in an effort towards building this kind of um, sense of place, which really transcends the graphics and the music, even though individually both of those things are pretty cool. And at the end, I did, I mean, I told you at the end, I did tear up a little bit and I did not expect to. Um, Jamie, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned the empty hallways um, and sort of the idea of like a wrestler walking on, you know, to, to, to the fight. Because I think that that what this game apes from the Mother series, right, is sort of being willing to kind of waste space just to set a mood, right? I think that's that's a very Mm -hmm. Mother thing to do, Um, just sort of like have an empty room that you walk through because it feels a certain way. Um, And I think that, that there's a lot of that. There's a lot of just sort of stuff that doesn't really serve any other purpose other than to kind of build a mood. And I think if you're not... If you're not receptive to that mood or if the mood isn't landing for you, then it's probably not going to work. But if you're in it, if you're like, if you're feeling it, which it sounds like you really were by the end, then that stuff, you really begin to appreciate it, um, even though it's very minimalist, right? Like it's, it's, it's not like they're, they're using a lot of different things, right, to set the stage. It's more like they're using sort of the absence of things or just really basic elements like traversal is a mood, you know, <laughs> like walking from point A yeah. to B is a mood. The absence of music in particular oh, yeah. is tremendously powerful in the game. You know, as you're approaching uh, the king in, in the final stages of the game, you know, as you're moving through the, the, the monster kind of capital city, the music gets quieter and quieter and it's very still. And then as you're walking into like the throne room, it's dead silent. Mm-hmm. And it's tremendously affecting and powerful in a way that um is so uh, the opposite of what games do normally i feel like games assault your senses you know and overwhelm yeah. which can be quite yeah, effective oh yeah. um and then this this is like uh already starting with a bare minimum palette and then it, and then it withdraws things uh and it's uh it's really cool yeah. i'm really glad that you saw mm. it through um now what you need to do is find your favorite content creator and then spam them constantly to play it and tell them there's only one right way to play it. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I've man. been, 
interested in hearing your thoughts on this. Yeah, and, and Jamie, you're, you're saying that there, it's very much worthwhile to go and, and play that back third of it and get that passive ascending. The thing that, that I was just sitting here researching was, you said 2017, and I was like, no way. That game is, like, old as shit, right? Um, so it did come out in 2015. Uh, oh, my bad. And, and no, 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 you're fine, because I, as you had mentioned it with... I was just trying to get timelines all synced up when you had said Bravely Default, you know, aped... What or you know, Undertale copied Bravely Default, and just trying to no, 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 fit those pieces together. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so uh, I was looking through our archives here, and you, I was like, well, did I play it in 2017? Maybe there was a reason Jeff and I just like stayed away from it. But no, I, it's here listed as uh, something we talked about back oh, yeah. in it, in October. Griff, <laughs> I feel like okay. you, this is... you got the neutral ending and then watch video of the pacifist, right? I I did, yeah. No, and and and. Going to what you guys were talking about, and in, in that there is merit in in playing that and experiencing that firsthand, you know, through game mechanics, I, I totally agree with you. Um, for me, it was just more of like the, you know, I don't, I don't have the time to rerun through the full save and do all the pacifism stuff and continue with that. So I figure I would just watch, you know the back end of it and, and get that but I, everything that i that you spoke to uh in terms of enjoying and experiencing and and all the nuance of it that just unfolds over time and and the reserved art style that you know speaks to something and, and you know potentially on purpose and then also just sheer you know capacity and economics for toby fox creating the game in a, in a short turn time um i enjoyed all of it and i'm glad that you you've found your way through it do you do you have any interest in in checking out delta room now or is yeah oh okay. yeah and i keep thinking about the game too and i it, it's it really sticks it sticks with me i was thinking i was in the shower the other day after i'd beaten it and i was like oh my god sans font was sans serif <laughs> and papyrus's font was papyrus <laughs> <laughs> like those kinds of thoughts keep occurring to me. And uh -huh. then I'm like, you know, it's stupid things like that. You know, that, that isn't a particularly brilliant thing, but for some reason in the setting of the game, it's like, Toby Fox, you're, you mastermind. <laughs> you made the sans man have a sans serif font. Um, you're so not yeah, wrong. Check out Deltarune. Deltarune is, is even shorter, right? Yeah. It's just, it's just yes, the first chapter. Significantly. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm, uh, and they they say they straight up say the word Delta Rune in um, this game, so I'm assuming there's a connection there. Um, oh yeah! So I'm uh, I'm excited to see that. Also, the just the fact that you're you're you are not the character that you whose name you choose in the beginning, as I mean, if you play the complete pacifist playthrough, and that character is the one who fell through the hole prior to you and became friends with um, Asgore and Toriel's first son and then died. I thought that was such a cool twist. Um, definitely cooler than anything Bravely Defined. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and how come we don't get... Pl I mean, I see plushies of like Papyrus and Sans all the time, but Do Dr. Um, Alphys is the coolest character in that game. How come we don't get... How come I don't see Dr. Alphys plushies? Do you like... I Dr. think there Alphys is a Dr. Alphys plushie at uh, okay, Fangamer. Good. Do you like how she okay, talks good. about anime all the time? Yes. And she thinks that that's true human history. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. It's very good. Do you think uh, yeah. anime is real? <laughs> or was uh, it? That's what it was, right? Was it? Was it the part where you have to answer, is anime real? Yeah, and I said it was. And then uh, Asgore was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad. To it's a, it's a game that's just loaded with charm, as you're describing when you have those epiphanies, yeah. and it's it's super I'm, great. I'm kind of shocked what games will kind of pull Shannon in to their center of gravity, and this one did. I I didn't think it would, but you know she's walking while I'm sitting there wasting my life playing video games. You know she's walking past me, you know doing productive things, and she kind of would just sit down and just watch she really watched most of the game and i can really understand why it's quite it's quite engaging and that i think even for a passerby the mood and the music and the art kind of has some sort of like ineffable pull mm -hmm. um and she she loved it as well 
Right on. Well, let's go deeper and older and retread worn history even more. Jeff, Final Fantasy IX? <laughs> uh, you know, I can't explain this one very well other than... so. <laughs> Is this comfort it's food? It's comfort food. Well, okay. So for some reason, I was reading about Maguri Mod... Um, which is uh okay so ff9 came out right for modern platforms right it's on steam it's on um uh switch it's on ios switch. everything else um but it kind of was known to have a kind of a shitty release uh there were some music looping issues when it first came out it has like shitty mobile font um when you're putting in character yes. names it's like emoji cannot be used <laughs> um <laughs> So just like That's lots funny. of lots of stuff that just made it feel like a shitty mobile port that was upported to Steam. Uh, gotcha. And also the backgrounds are really low res. Like they're the original pre-rendered backgrounds, like in 240p, blown up to be 1080p. So they look horrible. Um, so Maguri Mod was created by a team of people who actually give a shit about these products, unlike uh, whoever worked on it, um, and did some really like wonderful quality of life, um, and also just sort of like. Uh, artistic stuff to the game such as like ai upscaling on all the backgrounds um ha some experimental stuff to make the cutscenes run faster because they run at 15 frames a second that's horrible Oof. though don't turn it on it just causes in insane ghosting um but uh oh, other things like increasing the frame rate of battles which also run at 15 frames per second um unfortunately the battle system is hard coded so if you increase the frame rate you increase the speed of the battle so i've, I've increased oh, nice. it by a little bit but it's 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 marginal um but just lots of quality of life changes like removing ugly icons all over the screen uh changing the font back to something closer to the playstation font um so i decided to uh grab ff9 because you know i've been exploring retro emulation for a good portion of this year um on other devices and like I, I was playing around with the RG351P for a while. I tried FF9 on that and it was okay. Um, there was a little bit of audio crackle. So I was like, I'm gonna play this on Steam and see what that's like. And um, one of my favorite ways to play FF9 because it's a pretty easy game uh, is um, to challenge myself to pl have all the characters be level one, um, which is like just a, I know it sounds, it sounds ridiculous, but it's, it's, it's fun. And there are guides. It's not, it, it sounds yeah. awesome. Like, I wish I had the brain power to do that, but go on. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, 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 it doesn't really require a lot of brain power. I mean, there are, there are parts of the game where you can like screw yourself. Like a, you have to you have to set it up so that a certain battle has only two enemies in it instead of three or four, um, mm. and you have to essentially steal an item that allows you to petrify enemies instead of killing them because that's what that's how you can avoid getting experience. But the way it works is none of the bosses in the game give you experience. Um, so as long as you just fight bosses and use other tactics to beat normal enemies, you can avoid getting experience for the entire run up until the very end, at which point a couple characters have to gain levels. But um, I just, I really like that game and I think it's got a fantastic story and I decided to revisit it kind of in this up format. And, you know, initially I was like, well, for preservation's sake, I want to have this game and I'll just kind of test it out to see how it works. And I was so impressed. So I, you guys have both played FF9 all the way through. I didn't no. finish it. No, Jamie, you should you should uh, not you even should play close, FF9. But I love you should, the game. You should beat FF9. Okay, so it, in that I game, should. there are just a whole bunch of demi humans, um, and the game never really like explains why they're all over the world. But like in the first town in the game, there's just like a fish man, <laughs> and like it's a hippo yeah, boy. like a hippo boy called Hippal, and like all kinds of other random um, half human, half animal creatures, like a bird lady. Well, that's fantasy, that's baby. That's fantasy, baby. And uh, I was just walking around the town. Yo, did that burb lady? Can she? Can she? Can you date her? Uh, can you date that? I burb lady? I can give you another game about dating birds after this. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I just was walking around the first town of the game, and I saw the fish man, and I was like, "Wow, I can see parts of the fish man I've never seen before." <laughs> no, I really I know, want right? to date him. Yeah, yeah, it's a boy. Um, and I just. The pale underbelly of the fish For man. some reason, the fact that I could see parts of the fish man, I was like, man, like, I want to replay this game. This is art. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I didn't know that their genitals were shaped like that. Screw you, Roger Ebert. 
<laughs> Games are art. I, I just I just was looking at the, the the character models and I was like, you know, this like is it's not perfect. There are definitely some issues with sound effects. Um, some of them sound a little limp compared to the original sound effects. Uh, if you've never played the original game, you would never know. But uh, as someone who has played the original game and is a, extremely persnickety, I'm like, that sword slash motion is wrong, or like shit like that. Um, but uh, it's just, it's just really nice to like be playing a game I really love in sort of the cleanest form it's ever been, um, and with a mod that you know treats it with love and care, unlike the people who originally put it out. Um, Here's, here's my whole thing. And you right can speed now. it up so it doesn't take so fucking long. <laughs> and you can speed it up. <laughs> but here, here's, my, here's my question for you, Jeff. I own Final Fantasy IX already on too many devices to name, and I could easily uh, get it on yeah. Steam. But I'm also literally right now staring at the actual, my copy that I bought at Toys R Us of yeah. FF9. I'm staring at a PlayStation how's 3. The, how's the jewel case up. doing? Is it in good shape? Okay. It's in good shape. No cracks? Uh, no crap. How come Amaranth no, looks so I, dumb? He's the red-haired guy. I don't know, man. So should I play it on my? Should I play it on uh, my PS3 hooked up to uh, maybe even a CRT, or should I? Should yes. I play it on? Create the digital. On... Create the digital uh, save card in your PlayStation Three. <laughs> I mean, I think probably that might be the. You have you have an OG PS3, Jamie, or a Slim? I have a Slim. I have a, a top Slim is a uh, emulation for PS One, I think. Actually, I think they're all emulation for PS One, to be honest. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely emulation. Um, it's definitely emulation. What if I go to my local gaming store and I pay fifty dollars for a PS One, and I hook it up to my CRT? I would not recommend doing that. I would go with your PlayStation Three, honestly. I gotta put my cut on Jeff, the ground. Jeff, I, I offered yeah, Jeff that I'm, option, and then he went. I'm thinking. He just I'm thinking. Himself. I'm thinking. I think you know. I think I'm prepared to say for a new player, um, it is with Moguri mod. It is acceptable for your first experience with FF9 to be the Steam version. And it, it won't really be my first. I've gotten I've gotten yeah. far enough, you know. But I um, the. Yeah, I don't, the I AI don't. upscaling and the and the models looking nicer, honestly, like is is very refreshing, and you will see things you wouldn't have seen in the original game. Just to just to confirm, and for our listeners as well, Maguri mod is not official, and it is free. Correct. Right? Yes, it. Maguri. It's just a, <laughs> Maguri. It's just a dedicated <laughs> uh, team of people who are like, we're going to make this game not terrible. Um, and they nice. did. Uh, so yeah, I would say if if you are looking to experience FF9 for the first time um, via this mod, uh, Steam is an acceptable way to do so. I would not recommend it on any any other device than than the Steam version, though. Other than PS1 got or it. PS3 through PS1. Got it. Got um, it. Yeah, go I, I, Jamie, I, I'd I'd say go for the CRT. I mean, you're living that life right now, so I would suggest doing that. I would, uh, having played some stuff on a PlayStation One recently, um, yeah, the memory card degradation is a sad thing, and then also you're fucking corded to it, which is like kind of first world problem me. But you know, that's, that's why I'd say go PlayStation Three. It it uh that happened to you? Dang! It didn't happen to me. I'm just I I haven't I've been sticking with PlayStation Three. I've, I've loaded the PlayStation One up a couple times, but. Managing the files, you know, you got to do, you got to actually care about, you know, your blocks and shit on a PlayStation blocks. memory card. Um, unless you can go actually get the PlayStation official Sony card, you will more than likely be dealing with some degradation. So um, I'd say just Adios go PlayStation 3. Because uh, the, the PlayStation 3 did emulation for PlayStation 1 through all its versions due to having, I think, what the software cooked into, like, the disk drive. So that's fine where it is. Yeah, I, I uh, before I hooked it up, I watched some uh, My Life in Gaming videos about it. They, they seem to think that the emulation was uh, good. Not, not perfect, Yeah, it's good. But, mm. uh, yeah. I don't know. Does it use the same um, emulation that the PSP uses? I know that's silly, but... 
I think it's different. I think the PSP mm-hmm. is technically like perfect or something. It's or better. Like it's considered it, like the gold they, standard. They released. So I know that in um, this is sorry. This is a, a, a foray into a deep dark world. But I know that in um, the emulation scene, they they uh, took the, the the PlayStation BIOS from the PSP, and it's like a newer version. They actually created a new BIOS that um, some people think has better compatibility than like any other BIOS that came before it. So nice. yeah, hmm. the cool. PSP ain't perfect wow. though because I played games on there and I've noticed little bits and bobs. So yeah, but, yeah. Um, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, of uh, remastered games, um, I'm very curious, Griff, and I'll, I'll speak briefly about this. Uh, another remaster that I've been checking out a lot recently is uh, Saga Frontier remastered, which mm-hmm. I think is another remaster um, actually done right. Uh, of a game that probably doesn't like deserve a remaster. <laughs> <laughs> it's a game that I've always personally really loved, and part of the reason I modded my PS Vita because it wasn't on the um, PlayStation Classic Store. Um, yeah, huh. it's uh, it's a saga game, and I don't. For some people, that just saying that alone means like that tells them everything they need to know, for better or worse. I've never played a saga game. Have you? You've tell never played me. like Final Fantasy Legend or? You have it. You on may just not Game know Boy? it. On the Game Boy. On the Game Boy. No, I've never played okay. that. Never played a okay. saga game, as far as I know. Um, you've never played Unlimited Saga, the great board game that accidentally came Unlimited. out. Unlimited. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, uh, so, okay, so Saga is a. It started as um, portable Square RPG um, that essentially was like, hey, we're not going to give you very much money and you're going to be creating for a portable system. See what you can do with it. Uh, this guy, Kawazu, was involved. Um, and it's kind of more heavily inspired, I would say, by like actual D&D. Um, it has some elements in it that I would say are closer to that, even though it's still very much like JRPG-ish. Um, but it has like life points is like a standby Um weapon durability is a standby so so like you have your hp and then when you die you lose a life point um and you have only so many life points and when you lose all your life points you're like really dead and sometimes that means you're dead forever and other times it means you're dead until you go to like an inn um and then like perm does the game have permadeath saga frontier doesn't have permadeath um but some saga games do have permadeath like the original saga game your characters had hearts and if they, I don't remember how they lost hearts. I think if they just died, they would lose a heart. And if you lost all three of your hearts, you were dead forever. I, I'm thinking about the Legends game, yeah. right? And that's where you could lose characters, but then you would just go and recruit you, yeah, a new, new a new yep. dude. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So Final Fantasy Legend One and Two, um, which are Saga One and Two in Japan, uh, if your characters lost their hearts, they would be gone forever. Um, Saga Three, which was made by a different team. Uh, was more traditional JRPG. Um, they also have weird stuff like different races. Um, like there's humans, which generally mm-hmm. speaking are like the most adaptable, flexible race. They're like equip, like they can equip lots of stuff. They can learn abilities. They can, in the original games, they had to like purchase health upgrades. It was very odd. Um, but then they're like mystics who are like more magically oriented, but have various limitations. Then there were mechs, which are like completely rely on what you put on them. Um, so like if you, you could like load a whole bunch of equipment onto a mech and make it really powerful without ever raising it, uh, then they're, but it wouldn't level, it wouldn't level up and it's all just the, yeah, you just like throw a sword on it to make its strength go up or like you like put a piece of armor on it to make its defense skyrocket and its HP go through the roof. Um, and then there are monsters who have this whole arcane mechanic around eating other monsters and meat. Eat the meat. (laughs) That's my favorite song. It is a good song. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but anyway, uh, there's, they have this whole arcane mechanic that centers around eating other monsters' meat and then transforming into other monsters, and there's all these complicated systems. Saga, it's just a very complicated series, and it's known for having really obtuse, weird systems. Um, some other hallmarks it, of Saga are like Saga are like sparking. So like you can, um, if you use a type of weapon, you can have what's called a spark or a glimmer in battle and learn a new ability. Um, and that like whether or not you spark or learn new abilities is related to how tough the enemy is and all these other hidden factors. I don't know. It, it, I feel like I'm not doing the series justice, but it's just highly complicated. No, I think it, I it's think very, com- it, it reminds me more of like a PSO 
uh, kind of background, or sorry, I shouldn't say, yeah, Fantasy mm-hmm. Star, um, the the classic ones on the Genesis, more than Final Fantasy. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um, it's definitely not Final Fantasy, uh, and Saga Frontier right. is kind of unique in the Saga series. Um, it's the only one that I think of that I think I'm aware of that has like kind of a semi futuristic setting. Um, it's like sort of it's like a very open. It, I think it was described at the time as a freeform RPG. You can choose between one of like seven or eight characters. It's now eight characters in the remaster, and they all have these kind of like mini plots which don't really matter that much. And the only thing that really matters is the boss battles. I don't know. It's a weird game. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> From what I've played so far, it's a weird game. It's incoherent, right? Like the plot you're playing Red, and his plot is just makes no yeah. sense. Yeah. No, it does make a lick of sense, <laughs> and I, I I feel like they may. I don't know if this is added, but like you click on the story. That's new. Uh, feature and it's like oh it, it smells so new because it's like gives you a yeah. hint as to what to do next because it drops you drops you into the first split part where you can control in the airship and I'm like this is massive and there's nothing here <laughs> yes it's so, so big and it's so empty the whole game uh, looks yeah. like content <laughs> yes yes it does I Even get that with impression the added but I'm content I, of the remaster. I plan on sticking with it and playing, you know, a couple of the chapters at least. I don't know if it's really going to hook me, but I'm I'm really just running on your admiration yeah. for it, um, and the fact that I've never played it before. And if this is the most perfect version with the so lovely uh, double triple speed, um, so I, I, I'm gonna st- I'm gonna stick yeah. with it uh, on the, the Switch. The funnest parts about the game are like the interesting progression. So the way you get stronger in this game is by using attacks. It so Final Fantasy. Very Elder Scrolls. Well, Final Fantasy, like depending on what you do, you can you can like you said spark. Yeah. Different well, things. Final Fantasy two was directed by the Saga director Kawazu, so um, that game is kind of notorious for like essentially you get HP by like defending the entire battle in that game. Do you know about this? No, I didn't play Final Fantasy okay. two, but I know exactly yeah, where you're like going. You, the, the actions you, you perform your influence how your characters stuff, level up. Yeah. So it's the same idea in these games. Like if you if you're a sword user, then you're going to get faster. You're going to get stronger. If you're like a gun user, you're going to raise your gun attributes, like your speed and your concentration. If you're a magic user, you're going to raise your intelligence. Um, and the other, yeah, go ahead. It's funny that you you say that it's similar. I love that mechanic. I think, and, and that's part of kind of why I want to keep playing because I find that really interesting, and, and I am enjoying the fighting or the combat where you know you are procking these new abilities. That's, uh, I love procking the new abilities. There's something about that that is deeply, deeply satisfying. Yeah, it, what is I don't procking? Know if it, 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 it's how do you like, proc? It, it's just something that that occurs. Have you heard it, like, like spell proc? procs? I don't know where the word comes from. I can't think right now. I just remember from WoW. Yeah, like oh. My ret pally's procking crits all day long, baby. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm gonna don't I, curse I, at me. The uh, <laughs> I like the music in it too. Oh, yeah. uh, I was it's I cranked that up and was having a good time with it. But yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. But going back to what I was gonna say, it's when you when you said it was more uh, sagas more akin to like a D and D style level up system. I feel like this is the complete opposite of that in in Saga Frontier at least because you know you usually have like a hard level up point in in like your rp campaign where then you add your ability points to where you want to add them to but this feels you know much more in that elder scrolls you know i use what i use and then i evolve which is you know i think a more dynamic and interesting level up system that that you know D &D and other role playing suffer from not Mm -hmm. employing also proc is short for programmed random occurrence never knew that (laughs) oh nice uh, but cool. yeah, no, you yeah. should experience sparking at least once, Jamie. So what happens is, you're like, <laughs> it's it's like it's like a hit of heroin. I've got a subreddit. It's like for a you. hit of heroin. It's you, you're <laughs> in the battle, right? And you're fighting, and you're swinging your sword, right? And you're like, okay, this is whatever. Like I've done this before. And then your character pauses a little longer than normal, and a little light bulb appears over their head, and a very satisfying sound cue plays, and then they use a super powerful move they've never learned before. Yeah, That's cool. and then you can use that move forever. It's like the feeling of It's like that feeling of when you're playing an RPG and you level up in the dungeon and you're like, "Fuck yeah, I don't have to go rest or something like that because all my, 
you know, stat points go up. But it, it's even more dynamic because it happens in yeah. the battle and it kind of makes a wild swing in your exactly. capabilities. It's, it's kind of like they can show up in desperation scenarios too, right? Because like if yeah. you're low health and you're fighting a tough mob, then like your odds of proccing go way up, right? So you you might you might get a new ability like in the thick of it. You know, like you're, and then there's all these cool things like combinations. So, like if you combo the right abilities, have you gotten a combo yet, Griff? I have not. Okay. No. If you have all your characters use like abilities rather than just melee, then um, there's a chance, depending on the abilities you choose, that you might get combo attacks, which do even more damage. And there's like a really cool cue for that too. Like all your characters like flash when each combo goes off. Oh, yeah. sweet! And there's a hey. Go, s- since we're spe- since we're talking about um, terminology in gaming, and you said mob, I had to look that up because I was like, does that mean something <laughs> too? And yes, it does. Monster or beast? <laughs> no, I didn't uh, want to I know don't that. feel good about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Monster or beast? I was going to say on on the furry subreddit, I'm a mob. It depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, it's it's there's just all these weird systems and the game is just full of like arcane nonsense. Like there's magic quests that you can undertake. You don't have to do them, but you can and they're really weird. And like you learn magic and the game never tells you what the magic is until like like there's just so much weird stuff in the game. It's one of those games that I think just feels like it's bursting with possibility. Um yet at the same time kind of half Exactly, because there's so many strange things like for whatever reason, in the game, you play through the whole game, and then there are two monsters in the game that can possess your characters, and when they possess your characters, they give them special <laughs> equipment. And the game never tells you this. It's just there. So I know, because I've played the game many times, that living swords are really powerful, and if they, you get them to possess your character, you get an, an item called the Glow, Glow Randley, which gives you plus oh, 10 baby. to every stat. Now you want to talk about yeah, furry subreddits. Go. I know about yeah. that. But nobody who plays the game normally is going to know about that in a million years. Unless maybe it happens just by chance. Also, there's weird shit like battle rank, where the more battles you fight, the harder the enemies get. Never tells you about that. <laughs> so, like, you actually kind of do yourself a bit of a disservice by grinding. Mm-hmm. You want to build hmm. your character smart and fast. It's so weird. It's just a strange, strange game. Great music, though. It's wild. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with it. It's fun um, from what I've played. I, the the one kind of thing that might that may have soured me is w- w- the walkthroughs that I found online are just fucking <laughs> atrocious. And it's like, how did how did we ever live with walkthroughs? Dude, like I'm reading this? the FF9 then, game if it use walkthroughs, and I want to die. Uh, yes. Oh my god. <laughs> It's like those. Uh, it's like those recipe. When you look up a recipe, and it's like forty fucking pages of text about the person's <laughs> childhood when they made the quiche. They tasted quiche for the first time, and I'm like, God damn it! Just tell me what I'm gonna fight and what, what, is, what how I need how to fight when it. How come when someone when someone quiche. writes a walkthrough for like a small part of the game, they're like, Well, hold on, before I start walking you through the game, let me explain every mechanic and give my personal take on it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Attack is overrated. <laughs> um. It's a it's a good one. So I'm gonna, but the the thing that that does kind of make me a little nervous is you know it's called out that there's some of the characters that are much more interesting than the others, and I'm like, oh, uh oh, that's Red's not good. Is cool. If this is the high water mark, that could be bad. Don't play that game expecting to get any good plot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Good to know. I mean, I also okay. The only plot that's kind of cool is Asilis' plot, and they gave her more plot events, so hers is all right. Okay. Everyone else's is garbage. All right, I'll just temper yeah. my expectations and, and push through it. But hey, Hit that was double speed cool, right? button. Uh, yeah, uh, is it, yeah. they're cool. Henshin, baby. Um. I don't know. That's kind of coming down to our list here, Jeff. You've got Loop Hero. I know that is a recent yeah, game. <laughs> Let's just break our our trend here I'll, and talk I'll about something that came quick. out this year. Um, so I played about Jamie. Yeah, too. I played uh, about Go ahead. the first two chapters of Loop Hero. I think um, it's a kind of a wholly unique game, uh, and I, I would like to come back to it at some point, maybe. But it's it's just a lot. Um, essentially, it's it's I don't even know how to describe it. It's a roguelike. Um, but the premise of the game is like it's sort of like an idle game. Um, you walk around this loop over and over again, and in so doing, you collect like cards, 
and the cards you can use to modify the path you're walking on and its surroundings and it adds difficulty but it also increases the like your power um and then you have to keep adding more cards until you get a meter filled up which spawns a boss and then you have to kill the boss and within those mechanics there's a lot of weird stuff that goes down and um it's just hard to explain but it's just a weird game uh and kind of worth checking out at least once um just because it's it's so it's so interesting in like what it's trying to do like it's it's i've never seen a game where like you kind of have to set your own difficulty but like you have Mm -hmm. to set enough difficulty so that you can clear a hurdle at the end of the campaign or like the little mini campaign and there's because there's fail states oh yeah like your character can... can die and your character will die um it's not like a like a clicker or a progress quest which you just let run no, right there's you, you are actively well, playing, engaging i think in they it. call them campaigns you're playing like little mini campaigns so you know like you're going around the loop a whole bunch of times and you can retire at any point but your your ultimate goal is to kill a boss um and i've killed two of these bosses and they're pretty tough um and in order to kill these bosses you need to like have leveled up your character which you do by like putting these I, so like I'll just start giving examples. So like you can put, for example, um, like a vampire mansion, right, is one of the tiles. So when you put that there, um, like when you put it next to your path, any any like tiles that are adjacent or in the surrounding eight tiles around the vampire mansion will spawn vampires in in battles on those tiles. And vampires can be helpful because like they drop certain items or like they give you experience um but they're also hard and annoying because they join battles and they like do annoying stuff to mess with your character um there's also like you can spawn like tombs and i think like tombs will spawn undead but if you put two next to each other then it spawns a different kind of undead there's just a lot of weird stuff what is the battle mechanic like is it clicking attacks or rhythms or yep auto battle okay your character just walks around and and automatically fights the enemies and you have gotcha so there it is a little bit you better hope you can survive them clicker i mean that's that's really what it boils down to so it's kind of like you have to determine how much hardship your character can face um and slowly build them up but not too slowly because there's some disadvantages to that too um but you slowly build them up and, and like put enough obstacles in their way to make them strong enough to clear the boss. And then there's some like permanent development stuff. There's like a town where you can like build structures that gives you access to different cards. Um, mm. so, so yeah, like you, you're building a deck, right? You're building a deck of obstacles <laughs> that you can draw and play against yourself. Some of them help you too. It's just it's a really weird game. I don't I don't know how else to describe it, but it's a uh, it's it's a roguelike unlike anything I've ever played before. Um, I had a lot of fun with it, and I, I beat those two chapters, and I was kind of like, I don't know if I need to beat the other two chapters because I've done <laughs> this enough, but uh, it's certainly unique. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I, I, I've osmosed it in through other gaming um, podcasts and stuff like that, and it, it doesn't sound like it's something that i want to play but it seems like a fascinating game to exist yeah that's what i would say i mean i think it's i've never seen anything quite like it in terms of how progression works um so much though that i find describing progression really difficult because it is it is really a matter of setting obstacles in front of you that you can reasonably surmount and then making a few decisions like what equipment to wear um when to pop your limited supply of potions um Mm-hmm. What other decision points are there? That's pretty much it, honestly. Well, taking it in the exact opposite direction, Jamie, you played Fantasian. Fan- Fantasian. Fantasian? What yes, you, I did. You, you get out of that dungeon, that first dungeon? Yes, I did. Is it, does I, it, I, is it good? I like it. Okay. I like it. I, so to me, uh, I'm curious to see if you agree, Griff. To me, it just really is. It feels, sounds like FF7. Um, it just seems like they took the design sensibilities of not not the remake, the old FF7, and just kind of applied it to a new situation. The battle theme is similar. The aesthetics of the first dungeon is very that kind of futuristic situation. The tone of the music in general, I mean, it is Nobuo Umatsu, I believe. 
and uh, just a bunch of things. Uh, you've got a big sword. <laughs> it just, it just, a lot of it just really feels that way. And not only on the surface, but to me, like playing it kind of evokes the feeling of playing FF7 in a good way. It, it's slightly faster. The uh, the environments are beautiful and cool to look at. I love how they kind of modeled all of them and then took actual photos of it rather than just pre-rendered off of, you know, a CG background. And um, your character has amnesia. <laughs> so it's like there's a lot of things that really point me in that direction. Seems kind of breezy in a good way. And I, uh, I have enjoyed what I played. I definitely want to play more. What about you? It sounds like you weren't so hot on it. Uh, no, I think it's I think it's just I wanted to juxtapose it with Loop Hero, where it's doing everything that a game like this should, right? Where it's evoking some nostalgia. It's pretty. It sounds great. It's everything that has been done before, and it's no shit surprise that it do, that it does exist. Um, I'm still just kind of waiting for okay, and this is unique. How so? Mm-hmm. If that is, it's a well-produced and interesting um, phone game that that's kind of JRPG light. Uh, I, I, I do enjoy the battle systems and how there's some very minor strategy and, and it doesn't feel gross, like with on-screen buttons um, for that. Uh, but overall, like I, I still am, I'm still just kind of pushing my way through it to see when something happens to make me want to continue playing. Uh, one of the things that is unfortunate is that... That it, never um, happens. Uh-oh! <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone one say, of the, things the that's plant's dying. <laughs> and, these, and these NFT mother grabbers <laughs> want to burn down. Um, the, is that if you're playing on a phone, fo- you're playing it on your actual iPhone, right? Yep. So I played it on my iPhone a little bit. I also played it on my uh, my MacBook Pro. And on the bigger screen, you really get to see how wonderful these environments are. And I think, uh, you know, I don't know how much of the novelty the environments themselves is going to be. But that is enough. And they're pretty enough that I'm like, uh, I just love it just for that reason. On the phone, it's a little hard to see. Did you say detail. that the best way to enjoy it is on a 4K Apple television? With HDR <laughs> and a brand, only a brand, if you have thirty and a brand air new tags. Remote. <laughs> okay, just yeah. checking. You have to put. You have to be wearing thirty air tags. They have to be yeah, so I'm gonna buy an air tag, probably. I didn't yet, but I yeah, probably me will. Too. <laughs> but uh, I think more to come on that. I'm I'm kind of curious to keep going with it, but I, nothing really speaking to me about it. I I think Jamie, you called out everything that's worth talking about that game at the moment. Um, do you you got a few more things on here? I'm curious. So near replicant version two and change it's, or one point uh, two and change one point five, which I did not know. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so, um, did you yeah. play any of the near in in the I think PlayStation three time frame? Never touched that game, uh, and then only played a little bit of. Automata, but I wanted to play. Wanted to I play more. Probably play more of that. will Interesting. play more. Got to get that ending, e dog. Yeah, dog. I want to. I want to. But anyway, like my so I don't really have much of a history with Nier. I remember when this game came out in the popular Western press, it was panned for not being for being like actively hostile to the player and like juice. Um, I don't know about that. A lot of people are really that. mad about the fishing game. Yeah, really like that. I remember people. Someone on Gamespot made a video and was like, "This fishing game is so stupid." Yeah, I thought that it it had a lot of praise, and people who did pick up Near were really strong proponents. I think it got a cult following pretty quickly after it was okay. Received middling. I mean, that's the whole point of the whole point of this, right? Is that uh, Automata sold five million copies, and this did not sell well, and so they're like, "Well, now that we have the, you know." critical and popular success let's let's see if we can make this one stick now finally and um i don't know is this one different from the one you guys played back then a little bit yes so i love this game i immediately love to hear it (laughs) i think it's so Mm -hmm. i think it's so stupid in the best ways possible 
And the ways that it's stupid are interesting. Like, um, uh, the, the perspective shifts immediately were so awkward and uh, jarring and yet so cool. Like, just the fact that when you go into your little house in the village it gets, at like, first, 2D. Mm. it yeah, it gets 2D yep. for no reason. And, like, you, the stairway doesn't make sense because you go up one end and then you come in Dude, the other. Dude, but how amazing is that music, it, though? The mm. music's incredible. The second I met Grimoire Weiss, I was like, this is the best game I've ever played in my whole life. Oh, the fact this, that... This, this, does does the idle screen when you just boot the game up start with that like you fucking dumbass just immediately does it, that pop off right it, at the I've beginning it like it did in in PlayStation Three? Okay, that's wonderful. I don't. With, I with, didn't. Well, see you that. haven't met Kanye yet, but oh, uh, you met Kanye. I did. Okay. Con- Kanye yep. West. I met her. She's wearing she her sure underpants. Is. Y- you'll mm-hmm. and the character's like, why is she wearing underpants? You'll be ashamed of your, and of then your you words fight a monster. and deeds, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, uh, no, I think the game is great. Like, literally the second Grimoire Rice, I can't say, I said, I just said Grim, Grimoire Rice. His name is, is Grimoire Rice. <laughs> <laughs> the second that Condoleezza Rice started talking, I was like, I need to beat this game uh, 30 it's, times. It's really special. Amazing. You, sh- you yeah. should, it's very good. Griff, do you, do you have a preference between that and Automata? Which one do you like better? Um, I think that I preferred Nier more so just because of the, uh, I, I guess I don't know. I, I, I think that the storytelling was a little bit tighter in, in Nier mm-hmm. Automata did a lot of really cool shit, but it really was out there in what it was doing. And I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just nostalgia yeah. looking back is worn I'm, over. I'm kind some of in of the same too. place as you though, Griff. I, I, something about Nier just really stuck with me. Um, mm-hmm. You guys are... I'm confused. When you say Nier without a subtitle, you mean the one that came so, out? So we the got... History. The one that's yeah, called Nier. it was called Nier. So, okay. brief history lesson, because I know we don't want to spend too long on this. When Nier was first um, conceptualized, there were two versions. There was Nier uh, Replicant, which was the PS3 version in Japan, and there was Nier Gestalt, which was the Xbox 360 version in Japan. Um, and the only difference between them was uh, one had a young anime boy. Um, that was the Replicant one. And, Replicant. Yep, that's and then one had an old man. Uh, that's that's Gestalt. Gestalt. Yeah, and... Is his name Gestalt? His, they're just, their names are Nier or whatever you want to call them. Um, yeah. And then okay. uh, it was ported to, or it came out in the West, and they only they decided for Western audiences the only thing they would release was Nier Gestalt on Stole. PS3 as well. Yeah. Was it a PS3 only game or was it both? I believe it was PS3 yeah. only, but I'll fact yeah. check that right now. Oh, so you guys haven't really played the version that I'm The playing. only difference is just the character. Kind of. So okay. our relationship with Nier, it's kind of complicated because our relationship with Nier is like the person who's going to save, he's going to save his daughter, not his sister. Mm-hmm. And he's like this mm-hmm. old, weird looking man who's kind of ugly. Um, and I really am connected to that old, ugly man. <laughs> yes, same here. I'm, I don't know if I want a young boy. <laughs> No, I. It, I mean, it just. It feels like it's less yeah. weighty. That, that there's a less of an emotional connection between um, that character. No, but it's got that shonen energy. It didn't. And he's yeah. like, he's trying to prove himself. Pass. It didn't have like, that. Popola's like, Popola's like, you're a piece of shit. You can't fight those things. And he's like, I'm as strong as anyone in the village. And she's like, All right, you crazy mother grabber, get out there. I think the majority of Nier's dialogue from Nier was just like yeah, dot dot just dot. Nier being gruff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's the thing about Papa Nier is what, that's what they call him Papa Nier and Brother Nier. Papa Nier was like ah <laughs> oh, he just he, he was like not a good guy, but he really loved his daughter. No, oh, I don't know. I I should try yeah. Replicant because I want to experience the new ending. And it's pretty. I I can't imagine it was no, this pretty no, on the it, previous it consoles. Like it's it, it's sixty frames. No, it actually looked better on the second. PlayStation Three. What do you think about that, Papa Nier? <laughs> I'm just giving you shit. Yeah, it's I heard really, the PS3 version really... had great HDR. Uh-huh. <laughs> and NFT as well. It ran at 4K. You didn't know the PS3 could do 4K? Well, 
That just shows where you're at in terms of being a dummy. I think um, it may have killed my PlayStation 3 once. I think it may have been one of those. I know uh, Nino Cooney, the first one, did too. put a dagger in my PlayStation 3. I think Nier may have done that Nier, as well. Yeah, so, Jamie, you've gotten Grimoire Vice and you met Kaine, so you fought the first boss. You experienced the That'd interesting the kind of boss. like weird bullet hell shit they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, lo- I loved it. I love every second of it. It's uh, immediately, I don't know if it was this like a, was it 30? Oh, yeah, it was not 60, I don't think. So on 60, it's just hell of like just running around, jump. I'm like literally just running around and jumping because it's so much fun. And uh, it feels exactly like Automata did. Um, and uh, I love the combat system already. Uh, I love the art design. I love the the I got the second village the I went to where everyone's in their houses and they're like, go away. We don't like your kind. And my little shonen boy is like, what do you mean? I'm just a normal boy. And then uh, uh, the, I like the, the design of that village. And um, I'm into it, man. Stick with it. It's it's Seems definitely cool. jank, but uh, I hope you do. It's it just, so good. Oh, it reveals it, so much to you. It doesn't feel jank. Why is it jank? This is, I'm kind of surprised because I remember you said, you told me like it, it takes a while to reveal its riches and I'm like, well, immediately it feels amazing. I loved it. Have you um, gotten, have you been able to drift the pig yet? I, I drifted a pig. I got a prompt that said you can drift this pig. Drift the fucking like, pig. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah, um, no, I mean, I think I immediately liked it as well, Jamie. And, and I was captivated by just the, peculiar ambiance um and i think that yeah. that's something yeah. that i think you know uh I'm blanking on the guy's name right now the creator taro Doku yeah taro? taro like that's something that's sort of a trademark for him is like cultivating odd ambiances like just like a world where a character is doing a thing that you've seen before but something doesn't feel right mm-hmm. um, yeah i i i love it and i knew you know, this after you get Weiss and you go back to the village, half the people you talk to don't give a shit that this book is following you around. <laughs> yeah, they just want you and to like go plant some flowers like, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, and then the other half of people are like, "Oh, is that Weiss? That's so cool!" <laughs> like, and it's like, what is going on? I love it so much. It's a it's a wild one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very good. I recall it having a, a dodge that I liked in it quite a bit too excellent dodge. oh and the boss music excellent. the first boss battle music is weird i mean it's not bad but it's weird the actual boss music though is a certified banger it's cool. real good i hope you stick uh, yeah if i were to say if to invest the 80 hours into a game um this would be it's the one to 30. do jamie no it's only like 30 long? hours no, with all the no. extra endings yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, thank God. like i think it's probably like maybe a 20 hour clear if even and then extra endings much quicker and it's Got all these quests too. Don't worry so. about those. <laughs> okay. I think I may I have sunk more time into the side quest, which is why it did take me. It felt longer There's when a few... playing it. Yeah, go ahead. They were like, "Do I have to give the package to the guy that breaks?" I don't remember that one. Dude, I have there's no a there's clue. a guard. There's a guard who's like, in the first town, the guard is like, "I have a package for the village elder of the second town. Here it is. Oh, if you roll or jump." or do anything it's broken and you'll have to come back and so of course i go over there something attacks me and then it breaks so i'm wondering if i should put the effort in to take this package all the way there without here's my recommendation um because i will say that some of the storytelling in side quests can be really good um just read about which ones you should do and which ones you shouldn't because some of them are miserable i remember that much (laughs) got it got it I might do this one and see yeah. how it pans out. I, I generally speaking don't like using guides if I can avoid it. Although I'm slowly in try my, try looking I, up like a spoiler free guide yeah. that's just gonna help keep you on the also, straight and yeah, narrow. Also yeah, like something yeah, you want to yeah. do like this is not even a spoiler. Just make sure you by the time you get to like the third ending, make sure you have all the weapons in the game because that's a, that's an unlock okay. requirement for endings. Got it. Okay, yeah. will do. So, and don't harm anybody. <laughs> uh, you got to you got to harm I'll people. Do my unfortunately, best. <laughs> there's a lot of harm <laughs> in, 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 in the new franchise. Uh, oh, it's so good! It's it such a great game. game. <sighs> All 
All right, I think we probably got to call it here on time for game talk, unless there's anything absolutely critical you want to bring up here on the list. No, not, not great. Not really for me. Um, I, I know we got some, I threw some topics in at the, at the bottom of the page here, and, and we're kind of, again, like I said, getting long in the tooth. Nothing really, I think the only of note thing was, was the Sony store back down, but... At this point, I don't really have anything of interest to say about that or really anything that's been going on over the last couple months. Um, I don't read anything in, into that, really. Like, it, it seems like it was just a completely stopgap reactionary thing. It seems like those stores will be going the way of the Dodo maybe, like, a year from now or two. It sounded like they're probably going to leave them open for a while to come. <clears throat> yeah, Jim Jim Ryan's... That's yeah, right? Is Jim that Ryan, it? Ryan Ryan? Yeah. I forget his... Yeah, Jim Ryan's, like, actual statement on, like, yeah, I fucked up is, is pretty bold especially for like, that guy and the lads from his think history. we made a big mistake <laughs> <laughs> Shannon is just staring at me because she wants me to make waffles and I'm like you can make waffles what no it's, it's okay it's the waffle interlude sorry let me tell you uh, let me let me have my last piece of information here around Pokemon cards so I played the Pokemon uh, card battle trading game that's oh, free yeah. on the computer. You can play that game and it's free and there's a single player mode. And and you played the AR game that. where you tried to purchase Pokemon cards. And, and then I played the AR game where I tried to purchase <laughs> Pokemon cards and fuck man, it's weird out there. Everybody got their vaccines and they're like, you know what? <laughs> I don't want to buy Microsoft products. I want to get me some Pokemon cards. Uh, it, it's legit wild. Like I went to you know Target and they don't have any. And it's not just Pokemon cards too. It's it's Yu Gi Oh and it's it's like NFL, wow, yeah. MLB, like any, anything anything but Magic. Not, so Magic can go get Yu Gi Oh was not on that list for me because I saw the same sign at Target. It was just NFL, MLB, and Pokemon. But maybe Yu Gi Oh was like not important enough to be listed. I, no, yeah, they don't. They, at Target, they didn't mention Pokemon on the okay. sign, but then at the kiosk checkouts, when I when I went there, I went there on Friday, just to see what it would look like Lined when it was restocked. Them, and it was or whatever. That was Walmart. That <laughs> <laughs> was uh, there's just like a, a a brown paper or cardboard box with with all the sleeves in it. That then there's like eh, don't stab each other, and uh, I grabbed a bunch out of it and, and went to check out and they're the like self checkout was like threw an error up when I scanned the fourth one in because it was a limit three. So then this delightful lady had to come over and strike one of those off the list. <laughs> and, and that one has a rare card. A fellow in it, human, man. A telling a, tell a fellow human being that they can only buy three packs of Pokemon cards. <laughs> um, yeah, and I don't even know what the. I mean, like I have no idea what the rarity rates are. Or if, if there's like you know, true, va- like, is there, is, is there selling, is there commerce happening between this, or is it more of just, like, the, the roulette system of, of opening packs and getting that Logan Paul energy or whatever, which one of those douchebags is doing it, like, is, are people just riding that zeitgeist, or, or is this creating an uptick in interest in the Pokemon trading card game, um, and boy, oh boy, I have no clue how to play that game, so yeah, it's interesting playing it, uh, game. on the PC, <clears throat> I'm in, I'm enjoying it. It's different. It's definitely not Pokemon, which is kind of wild. No, it's very different. Um, yeah, significantly, and it's it's very different from uh, pretty much any t- TCG that I've you know had exposure to. It's like you can hypothetically lose immediately. That's so. It's Griffin, it's kind of weird. Literally every TCG. <laughs> that is one turn <laughs> no, kill. I is mean, like every every card game has that shit in it. After a while, yeah, really. Magic okay. has a one turn huh. kill. Well, I didn't play Magic. Yu-Gi-Oh has one turn so. kills. Oh Yu-Gi-Oh my god, has a one turn yes. kill. It has more than anything practically. Oh, it's I super suppose. broken. I mean, so much so that they're oh, like basically soft rebooting the entire card game with a new format. I read about it recently. Really? For Pokemon? Yeah. Or for Yu-Gi-Oh? Hmm. Well, it did. It, I mean, so I got some packs and I like have been playing that, and it's been it's been interesting. Like I said, it's not a card game that I'm I'm used to. Uh, or does does my knowledge of Pokemon help out anything when playing it? Um, yeah, it's it's kind of wild. And it's also wild that there's there's no Pokemon cards in existence anymore. Also, um, the so. newest Yu-Gi-Oh is merely called Yu-Gi-Oh Sevens. I'm pretty sad about that. 
Nice. There was, I think, a pack that that was had an empty case that was like forgotten memories or something that sounded right. pretty rad. I, I don't. I'd have to look that up, but yeah, it seemed interesting. But the S and sevens is backwards, so at least it has that going for it. <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. Um, okay. So I don't know. You guys want to wrap it up here? Yeah, Call it good. We're good. See yeah, you again in another three Jamie months. Got waffles to make. Make Jamie your waffles. waffles. I have to help Jessica build a shelf. She she believed in herself, but she could not. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> did you guys? Oh my god! Did you guys see that sign on Twitter? She believed she could, so she did. But it's like a complete mess. I'm going to send it to you after this podcast. It's very good. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> All right, that'll do it this week, uh, this week, this month, this uh, bi-monthly period in which we get together and talk about video games and half, uh, half, half-heartedly half expecting others to play them. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening. I've been Griffin Hoffman. There's been two other people yep. on the show. Jeff Brewer, that's me. Jamie Scherer. All right. All right, guys. guys. See ya. Bye.